you have the symptoms of coronavirus. Friends, family or workmates may have already been infected. Whether you live or die depends on two things. How Australia's health authorities and hospitals cope with this pandemic, but mainly how old you are. We would be particularly worried for frail elderly patients who became unwell with respiratory failure with this infection. Associate Professor Chris McIsaac is Director of Intensive Care at Royal Melbourne Hospital. As coronavirus gathers force in Australia, he and his staff are on the highest alert level in modern history. We have a 42 bed ICU. I think if we needed to provide intensive care for more than that number, uh, it wouldn't be business as usual. What do we know about the type of people who are being killed by this virus? Age, overriding, overriding determinant, age. Elderly? Yes. In Hong Kong, Professor Gabriel Leung is one of the global scientific leaders in the fight against coronavirus. He says if infected with the virus, people over 65 are 20 times more likely to die from it than those under 65. Let's pray that we will not see a nursing home or retirement home facility um, having the same experience because the outcomes could be absolutely, absolutely dire. Tragic news this morning, a 95-year-old woman who was living at the aged care facility here, losing her life to coronavirus. This In Australia, the cases are coming. And as Professor Leung has already witnessed in other countries, the fear is what starts with a few cases quickly become hundreds. And then local epidemics soar into uncharted territory. Now is the time to really pull out all the stops, put everything you got into it to fight it. We have to give it the whole of government approach, give it all you got, throw everything at it quick, and early and hard. That will buy you sufficient time. And if you're extremely lucky, you might even be able to contain it. If you're extremely lucky. If you're extremely lucky. We're actually fortunate to have designed our ICU with a pandemic mode. We've never needed to activate that mode, but that's regularly tested and ready to go in case we do get an influx of patients. Like in hospitals all across Australia, Chris McIsaac and his senior intensive care staff at Royal Melbourne are preparing their emergency pandemic response for when coronavirus hits hard. So when we push that, the whole pods A and B go negative. There's a proper anteroom, all the doors are automatically closed. Absolutely. And there's actually an airlock Definitely. to enter yep. in three spots. Yep, and that's ready to okay. go. Good. We don't know where the cases are going to emerge in particular, and so it's important that all hospitals have their pandemic plans activated. Professor Kirsty Busing is director for the Victorian Infectious Diseases Service. They've got someone down there. They've just arrived from Iran, mm -hmm. um, and they've got off a plane yesterday. Yeah. Now, they're, they're febrile and they're hypoxic. So this will require community response. Uh, everybody needs to understand that, that we, we are facing a health challenge, but it's a health challenge that, that together I think we can um, overcome and help to limit the impact. But with Australia's death toll from coronavirus standing at three and around 80 confirmed cases, Professor Leung warns there must be dozens, possibly hundreds more cases out there that haven't yet been detected. For every death, you would expect to see 80 to 100 cases. So if you start seeing deaths before you start picking up large numbers of cases, the only conclusion that one can reasonably and scientifically draw is that you hadn't been testing nearly early enough or extensively enough. Unless you go and test, you're not going to find. We're looking 
at scenarios from the most benign through to, you know, some millions of people being infected over a, a, a period of several weeks. With the worst case scenario of millions being infected in Australia, the risk is that our health system will become dangerously overloaded. But at least, according to Professor Leung, we're better placed to come through this pandemic than many other countries around the world. If you've got millions or tens of millions or hundreds of millions of people who might actually be infected, I fear that this is gonna bring about another massive instance of health inequity. Because this disease actually is only treatable if you've got ICU beds, if you've got ventilators, if you've got good drugs availability to tie the people over when they get really sick. In other words, you're saying the people who will survive are only those who can afford it. In health systems that can afford it. Coming up.